every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every time we gather, we are to continue steadfastly in the apostles' teachings. In the apostles, because Christianity is apostolic and historic. So since Christianity is apostolic and historic, we are supposed to continue with what has been handed down to us. Brother Paul says, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another man build it upon that foundation. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid. Meaning, I have laid the framework of the body of truth that is supposed to be carried faithfully and handed down to one generation that will hand it down to another generation that will hand it down to another generation. That is actually what it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to be found inventing. We're not supposed to be found inventing or innovating. We are supposed to be found excavating and bringing out what is already there. That's Bible teaching. That's how it's supposed to be in church. You see, all of that, all through the scriptures we read in Acts, they were all called disciples. <clears throat> Look at Acts chapter 4, I mean chapter 8 verse 4. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. <clears throat> Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Why were they scattered abroad? Persecution. Persecution came to the church. The people were scattered everywhere. People were being arrested. People were, be, were being, you know, killed. People were being murdered. There was intense persecution on the church. Now, there's a pattern I want you to observe. Because in that Acts chapter 8, one story was handpicked. And that's the story of Philip going to Samaria. The first thing is, they were taught. They were taught. They were taught. Chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. Then chapter 8, persecution. They were taught. And the outcome is that they could now go everywhere preaching the world. They could now go everywhere. Every one of them was a preacher of the world. Something significant there is... It was during persecution. What a time to run away. What a time to abandon the faith. What a time to deny that you have ever been a Christian. So these guys had an opportunity to run. A time to escape. Because there was persecution. But the Bible says they went everywhere preaching the word. Because they had learned from the apostles. They went everywhere preaching. I thought they would have gone to United Nations with placard. You know, activism, placard discrimination against christians preaching united nations we have come discrimination they are not allowing religious freedom of expression united nations do something about it no persecution brings the best out of the church yeah it brings out the best it is when there is persecution people pray anyhow people pray because it produces that is where you see power in the midst of persecution that's the way it works you can't pray it off you can't pray of persecution. <laughs> you can't. That's why in Acts chapter 3, when they, were, when they healed a lame man and they were beaten. In Acts chapter 4, they were humiliated for miracle. Bible said they went back to their company and reported how they were malhandled. They didn't pray judgmental prayer. They lifted up their voices to God and said to God, Lord, you are God. You are God. Who by the mouth of David, your servant, have said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings and the rulers have risen up against Christ and against his anointed. But Lord, behold their threatening. Behold their threatening. See how they threaten us and grant us boldness. They didn't say stop them. Mm -mm. Let them continue. But give us boldness. That with all boldness, we may preach your word in the midst of their threat. By stretching forth our hands to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your holy son Jesus and the place was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and went everywhere preaching the world. You don't pray persecution off. When there is persecution, you pray for boldness because the best of a believer comes out when there is persecution. Am I teaching good? We pray for boldness. We pray for miracles. We pray for utterance. That in the midst of trials, we are not deterred. We are confident. We are bold to declare God's word. These guys, you know, these are the same guys who said, they say, Peter, you are with Jesus. Say, I know him not. You don't say, Jesus, I don't know him. Please don't be calling that name near me. They deny Jesus. 
They were not even the ones to be crucified. It was Jesus that was to be crucified. They were denying Jesus. But after thorough teaching, after thorough teaching, the Bible says when they beat them, they rejoiced that they were worthy to suffer for the name of Christ. They were not running from persecution. They were running to persecution. When believers are well taught the word of God, nothing can stop the preaching of the gospel. Nothing. Go to northern Nigeria and see Christianity. Go to northern Nigeria. Go and see Christians that are not sure that if they go to church, they will come home. Go and see that they are not deterred. I remember when we used to be back in Zaria under the persecution our house was burnt to ashes the Muslims came and burnt down our house intimidated us wanted to burn down the church in the midst of that I was preaching I was entering everywhere I will preach in the day I remember in my school one time they declared me wanted they were looking for me everywhere in the night I was sleeping in female hostel under the bed brethren gathered made a way for me every night they would take me to some sister's bunk and put me under to sleep during the persecution one of the one of the presidents of a fellowship was slaughtered that's all they laid him down and slaughtered his neck they were looking for us in the midst of his prayer we pray all night and preach all day pray all night preach all day pray all night preach all day we will walk close to them and say receive you see them falling under the power and they will run power past power they come with sword, we come with Lakota Balata. You, you know, persecution brings out the best. It makes you pray. It makes you fast. Because under persecution, you know that the only thing you have is God. All these uh, butter and bread Christianity. Praise God. They went everywhere preaching. And they said, I bear in my body the marks of Christ. <laughs> I bear in my body the marks of Christ. Somebody said, let us pray. That nobody can touch us because we bear in our body the mark of Christ. That is why they will touch you. Because you have a mark that will make it easy for you to be identified. The mark of Christ doesn't mean touch not. The mark of Christ means marks of persecution because of Christ. That is, we have marks in our body that have been put on us during persecution because of our faith in Christ. That's the meaning of mark of Christ. Mark of Christ means marks that came. As a result of persecution for the gospel. That's why his brother Paul said, yes, for let nobody trouble me. Because I have charted my course. I am on a journey where persecution is part of my journey. The marks are already on me. Are we teaching here? So in case you have been praying mark of Christ prayer, you better stop that. Father, I bear the mark of Christ. Nobody can touch me. Uh -uh. That is why they will touch you because the mark will make it visible. Am I teaching here? Mark of Christ is marks of persecution. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you. No servant is greater than his master. If I was abused, they will abuse you. If I was rejected, they will reject you. So, these guys had seen the pattern. The disciples had seen the pattern. 